This is Miriam Cardenas and Jessica Prende. And for our case study presentation, we are doing deep vein thrombosis. So we focused on a patient named JB. He is a white male who presents to his primary care provider with a chief complaint of 8 out of 10 left calf pain and swelling in his leg and ankle. These symptoms have been present for six days and worsened in the last 24 hours. JB's medical history includes type 2 diabetes and DVT four years ago. He has a family history of his father dying at age 63 from an MI and his mother who has type 2 diabetes. His social history includes living alone, sedentary lifestyle, smoking 28 packs a year of cigarettes, and an alcohol use of 3 to 4 beers a day on weekdays and 6 packs of beer on weekends. So for the physical exam of JB, we note that he is overweight with a weight of 245 pounds. His vital signs were benign, but he had a heart rate of 110 and a temperature of 99.8. His head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat assessment were normal. His chest had bilateral wheezes, but no crackles. For the heart, abdomen, genitalia, and rectum, he had benign findings. As for the extremities, he had no clubbing or cyanosis, but he did have left foot, calf, and ankle that were swollen. For labs, JP had a CMP, inflammatory markers, hypercoagulability profile, a specialized serum test. He also had diagnostic imaging, which showed an ultrasound, no blood flow in the left posterior tibial vein. For treatment, he was on warfarin. So below are laboratory test results, and I will go over the abnormals with you. The abnormal results in the blood work included elevated white blood cell count, of 12,000 and an ESR of 23. These results usually increase with inflammation. Other results were also elevated that were also elevated include cholesterol of 280, HDL of 30, LDL of 152, and triglycerides of 160. With these eleva elevated cholesterol levels, JB is at very increased risk of heart disease. He also had a homocyste homocysteine, um, which was elevated of 91. When homocysteine is elevated, it can cause arterial damage and blood clot formation. JB's homocysteine result can also be elevated due to his diabetes, smoking, and drinking habits. Most significantly, JB's hypercoagulability profile was positive for protein C deficiency. Protein C deficiency makes, more, makes one more prone to blood clots. Um, these are just JB's lab results that were abnormal, and here are the normals. So what is a DVT? A DVT is a blood clot that's found deep inside the vein. It occurs in veins in the lower legs, thighs, arms, or pelvic area. There can be proximal DVTs that are located in the femoral, popliteal, and or iliac veins, or distal DVTs that are located below the knee in the veins of the calf. If discovered early, a DVT is treatable. If it is not, a DVT can dislodge from its site and travel to the lungs, blocking blood flow. This is known as a pulmonary embolism. This is just a picture regarding the blood vessels showing blood flowing through the vessels. A deep vein thrombosis can be dangerous and life-threatening if left untreated. This is known as a pulmonary embolism. The DVT can dislodge from the site and travel to the lungs, blocking the blood flow causing pulmonary hypertension, hypoxemia, pulseless electrical activity, and even death. This picture is a male um, having sudden shortness of breath and chest pain. As you can see, the blood clot has dislodged and traveled to his lung. Some clinical signs and symptoms of DVTs include swelling, cramping, tenderness, skin discoloration, pain, and weakness. As you can see on the picture on the right, it just shows that the leg is swollen and it is reddened. So there are three crucial factors that play a role in the formation of DVTs. This is known as Bercher's triad. The three components of this triad are venous stasis, vascular injury, and hypercoagulability. Major risk factors for the development of DVTs include injury to vein, fractures, limited movement, heart disease, obesity, and a history of previous DVT. It also includes Inherited blood clotting disorder, certain medications such as estrogens or birth controls, protein C deficiencies, or high cholesterol. Here is just the diagram that we included. 
just to describe Virgo's triad. As you can see here, uh, Virgo's triad is the vessel injury that we described earlier, having a hypercoagulable state that just leads to increased clot formation. This can be a result of inherited disorders, such as protein S or protein C deficiency. Also having venous stasis, limiting motility, and this can all just result in clot formation in the legs. So some of these are inherited causes of blood clots. Some can be um, increased levels of natural procoagulants. Those are stated below. Decreased levels of natural anticoagulants like protein C or S deficiency um, or TFPI, abnormal fibrolysis, um, and also there are other inherited causes. So the etiology for our case study is that we know that JB had increased cholesterol levels that just led to him having increased risk for heart disease. Four years ago, JB had a DVT, which is a strong risk factor for having another one. JB is overweight with a BMI of 35.1. Having obesity doubles the risk of blood clot formation. JB's social history includes the 28-year smoking history that we mentioned earlier, as well as his history of alcohol usage. So for the pathophysiology, a thrombus can grow via the intrinsic or extrinsic pathway. These, um, the most common pathway is the intrinsic pathway. That is damage to the blood vessel wall, causing a platelet plug at the forma formation at the site of injury. So here's a small diagram talking about the coagulation cascade. You see you have both intrinsic and extrinsic, um, the most common being intrinsic causing this coagulation cascade going down to the common pathway for factor X and then going down to prothrombin, turning into thrombin, which ultimately turns into fibrinogen, which causes a fibrin clot. So here we describe the immune response. So when a cell is injured, it creates an inflammatory response and that plays a role in the formation of a thrombus. The inflammatory process involves increased vascular permeability, emigration of leukocytes, and phagocytosis. When a cell or vessel is injured, vasodilation of the vessel occurs. Next, emigration of the white blood cells, platelets, histamine, and prostaglandins rush to the site. We noted that in JB's lab work, he had a white blood cell count of 12.2, which just indicates inflammation in the body. Increased capillary re permeability releases fluid into the interstitial tissues, causing local edema. The cardinal signs of inflammation include heat, redness, tenderness, swelling, pain. JB's chief complaint was swelling to his left ankle and foot and having pain in his left calf for six days. JB's symptoms are considered diagnostic indicators for someone with deep vein thrombosis. Diagnostic tests or labs that are done for suspicion of DVTs include blood work of D-dimers, hypocoagulability profiles, CMP, CBC, homocysteine. Diagnostic imaging that is often do done include ultrasounds, venous colored flow Doppler, contrast venography, MR venography, and CT venography. This picture just includes an ultrasound of the vein that has a thrombus and then the artery right next to it. And this slide is just a summary of what we had gone over before for JB's workup as we tested him for all of these inflammatory markers, the CBC. We also tested him for the triglycerides, cholesterols, the homocysteine, and also, most importantly, the protein C deficiency. So this slide just goes over treatment for a DVT. A patient can be placed on anticoagulation, such as oral blood thinners, sub-Q injections, or IV treatments. Drombolytics can also be given depending on the severity of the DVT. In, in extreme cases, a patient can't have surgery. In situations where patients cannot receive anticoagulation or thrombolytics, an inferior vena cava filter can be placed just to prevent PEs from, form from forming. Compression stockings can also be placed just to prevent the swelling associated with DVTs. And we have reached the end of our slide. Thank you so much for listening to our case study presentation on deep vein thrombosis.